the mechanisms, um, they represent a, a, a consensus, a global consensus of cities and they root in the, in the history of OSC. So we were working alongside uh, cities uh, as institutional partners and then also the cities themselves. And we were running into this problem where you know, the, um, uh, in, in Europe, the European Commission would invest a lot of money in smart city innovation, but then the results would have a, a tough time launching uh, afterwards. So there was no, let's say, sustainability of the outcomes, although the value was proven. Um, the, the, the problem there was a, a lack of interoperability. So let's say a company involved in the process, they would have a, a solution and they would have to redevelop or redesign parts of the solutions in each city they would go. Now in Europe alone, there's 80,000 cities and communities. So of course that, that sinks a lot of business models. So we, this was very early on. So the cities involved were Hel Helsinki, Manchester, Antova, Santander, Porto, uh, Milan, and so forth. So some of the vanguard cities uh, when it comes to smart city uh, projects. And um, we, we came together and we said, okay, we need to solve this problem because it will just scale up and actually exponentially uh, with, with this whole uh, smart city uh, evolution uh, or, or market also uh, scaling up. We got together with 31 uh, cities out of seven countries. Back then we didn't know how to solve it, but we knew it would have to do something with open data, open APIs open standards and that we need to be implementation driven uh, so that we need to learn on the job, uh, so to speak. Uh, then we had a big project, um, a large scale pilot in, uh, in Europe called Synchronicity that gave us um, a frame, let's say, to, to solve the uh, or try to solve the problem, which we did. So there were very different, let's say, infrastructures in cities. Uh, you know, Santander had been at it for many years longer than, for example, Antwerp, so the stack was completely different. Yet, we, we succeeded in a minimal fashion uh, for these cities that are, you know, completely different, have different cultures, different policy, and so forth, to still exchange solutions, services, and data amongst them. Uh, so there, the minimal interoperability mechanisms were born in that project. So with 10 cities, then 10 more joined that project. But what we did is we took it out of the project and we elevated to the level of the network where the whole network back then, I think it was about 100 cities, um, uh, you know, approved the MIMS, so to speak. Um, so now let's say a new city that joins in principle approves the work that, uh, that, that uh, the, the, the cities before them have already approved. And the interesting thing is that it's not, a, you know, a, a piece of software uh, that, that we support. It's a specification. So anybody can, you know, consult what it is and build it. A city can do it themselves. Local companies can do it, you know, and, and, and that's happening all around the world. So what are the MIMS? Um, the, the three first ones is a context management API. So let's say, let's say there's a smart car. It drives into a city. It needs data from that city. Where are the roadworks? You know, where are the potholes? Things like that. What are the bus schedules, for example? So it gets that data. But of course, as it drives through the city, it also generates data. So it gives that data back. So that's the exchange of context information. Now to do that, it goes from one city to another, to another, to maybe another city in a different country. You need to speak the same language. So that is MIM2. That is uh, the data models. And then once you have that, you actually have an ecosystem that's generating data. So then you need to decide, okay, who gets access to what under which conditions? And that is MIM3, the ecosystem transaction management. There are two more MIMS uh, underway, which have been adopted by the network as work items. One is on personal data management, because a lot of services these days rely on personal uh, data more and more. Um, and typically nations have that uh, pretty well covered with national policies and so forth. But, you know, it's an economic area. It's a global world. So, so how do you ensure that, you know, the, the, uh, the, the right rules and, and, and kind of protections are, you know, kind of follow the person uh, and, and are transposable across different contexts. So that's MIM4. And then MIM5 is on a, a fair and ethical uh, artificial intelligence. And that, as we increasingly rely, let's say, on automation, uh, what, I, what I uh, talked about earlier, it's also important to see, okay, where did artificial intelligence uh, make a decision? And, uh, you know, so you, you open the hood of the car and you say, okay, there. And then you say, okay, um, how can you govern that? Uh, so so you, you avoid a, a scenario where in 10 years from now, decisions are being taken. You don't know, <laughs> you know who was behind the algorithm and so forth. So that's you know, MIM5. So MIM4 was proposed by the city of Helsinki. Meanwhile, it's, it's quite a large group. Same with MIM5. 
uh, which was proposed by, by the city of Amsterdam. So they're very minimal. Uh, so, so it's a very, let's say, small thing to, to do for a city. It's quite, quite um, uh, low cost as well uh, for, for a city to you know, become OASC ready. But after that, they can start kind of engaging and exchanging solutions and linking up and being part of a global ecosystem. And it's all a not-for-profit kind of neutral thing. And uh, may maybe also importantly uh, uh, to, to mention is that as an organization, we are firmly on the demand side. So nowhere in the decisions on what should MIMS be are companies involved anywhere. So um, it's, it's cities. Cities have the final say. They're supported by institutional partners and kind of um, a knowledge organizations and so forth. And of course, we do work with companies, but they do not decide uh, what we uh, uh, kind of propose, which I think is very important uh, because what we're doing here is building a consensus that can then be interfaced to, to the supply side and they can say, okay, so that is what to comply with. And that uh, division, I think, is quite uh, important in the work with.